So I needed to investigate the Vantrue hardwire kit for my E1 dash cam. I wanted to use uh, parking mode and it requires a uh, connection to a live uh, fuse when the car is turned off. And uh, just coincidence that after a few days that that had been installed, the car battery was completely flat. Um, so it was totally coincidence and uh, the car battery was indeed knackered and that's now been replaced um, but I at the time thought well hang on a second I haven't got any sort of power supply I can uh, plug it into and check that the uh, battery under voltage protection is kicking in it was uh, adjustable on a switch on the back of the Vantrue hardware, hardwire kit. Um, so I thought, well, I'm going to get a cheap bench power supply. I've uh, pretty much got rid of all my main tools years ago when I stopped servicing the TVs. What I do now really doesn't need any specialised equipment, certainly with power supplies, but I thought at £59 that this one was going to uh, to grab one. Uh, this particular one is uh, 0 to 30, uh, 0 to 5 amps. And again Amazon, let me see what it's called, so this is the RS30SP, sorry RS305P DC power supply, uh, programmable switching power supply, uh, four digit LED and it's got six sets of uh, storage with PC software uh, USB interface um, so yeah that's what we uh, that's what we went for there's literally dozens of power supplies on Amazon they mostly get mixed reviews I have to say um, but this one was uh, well, five stars out of five with only 11 ratings so I thought we would just go for this and well, we'll see so let's have a look at what we've got here we have the obviously the main unit and we have a product uh, manual Again, loads of languages in there. The first few pages are in English, so pretty much pages one to six uh, are English. So there's not a hell of a lot going on there. We have a CD, which I seem to recall from the reviews. They said don't even bother installing because it, it doesn't work. The USB software, just download it uh, direct from the website I think that was for this one uh, little crock clips uh, to plug into here again I think somebody said they were not the best quality but you know this sort of thing is easily uh, replaced with something decent uh, we've got your standard USB cable um, looks longer than you uh, sometimes get these days and we have our IEC uh, plug uh, and uh, yeah, the correct UK plug on the end of there, which is nice. Let's just have a little look at the unit. It has a carry handle. Weight, I'm just going to chuck it on the scales. So it's a fraction under 2 kilos at uh, 1970. Grams. Uh, on the back we have the serial number, the input which is fused, uh, USB and there's a warning about uh, do not remove that label. Uh, quite a large fan, it'll be interesting to see whether that is on all the time or whether it is uh, thermistor controlled. Nice metal case. And my colour blindness isn't exactly assisting in that colour. I suspect it is a greeny colour. Nothing on the other side. You've uh, got very easy access with a small metal uh, probe or screwdriver to live 
parts by the look of that. I um, don't know whether you can see through there. <laughs> I'm not really a fan of, uh, of that sort of thing. If you've got kids and they can chuck in something, you know, and touch something live, which I'm pretty certain you can, that uh, is not a good idea. It wouldn't have hurt just to have that area blanked off, uh, I think. Anyway, on the front we have, uh, so we've got six memory buttons, yeah, just push. We have a pretty large on-off button, quite possibly a soft standby button. The ground, earth and live, uh, and we've got overvolt protection settings over current, list, I'm not sure what list is for, and then you've got uh, constant voltage, constant current and lock and uh, left and right and the rotary encoder. There is a protective screen over the, uh, sorry, a protective film over the screen which we will take off so that you can at least get the best impression of the screen. When we power it up, again, I'm not expecting very much from a screen on something that costs 60 quid, but we'll see. Cable, yeah, not overly long, unfortunately, but uh, no big surprise. Okay, let's fire this up. Okay, so. We have 5 volts, 1 amp, and uh, off, whatever that is. So let's see if we can turn this. Okay. Now uh, let's see, that's how you can you vary the digits if you want to get it easily done. So you can yeah, go to each digit. So if you want exact figures, so you can go to 10, 12, 5, whatever you want, uh, just by going like that. Yeah. How we get out of that, I have no idea. No, oh, you just pause for a second. And uh, current, uh, let's switch the current back to voltage and uh, watts. I don't know how you select the watts. Let's go for that. No, that's lock. List. No, don't know. I don't know what this does either. Now again, you can move through the figures with the left and right buttons if that's easier. And I think if you wait a few seconds it will come off of there. This one is Okay, well that's running something at 5 volts and off. So I think if we've got something connected it will now be showing current and watts. Just look at the back, the fan is not running. It's a little noisy. If you turn that off that noise goes. whether that is just, yeah, I think it's just the noise from the power supply, a bit unusual. Right, so let's connect, well, we've got the uh, HDS, I don't know whether you're going to be able to see this, probably not, if I can rest it up there. So let's just turn this on. We're on DC volt and we're just going to see what we get on the meter. So the meter says uh, 5.004, uh, power supply thinks it's doing 5, so I think that is uh, pretty close. Let's just pop that up to, oops, let's pop that up to 15. The sound from the power supply varies as the voltage changes. So it now thinks we're at 15 volts. 
and meter agrees with that, pretty similar spec to the 5. Let's, oh, I've done it again. Let's pop that up to the 30. Oh, hang on. Oh, it goes to 32. Let's pop it to 30. This time the rear fan has kicked in. Not particularly noisy, but you know it's running. Let's check that. Yeah, it's even more accurate. So, uh, yeah, pretty impressive. Does it really go to 32? Yeah, perhaps it does. Let's check. Yeah, it does. So, 0 to 32. And I don't really think I've got much I can power from this uh, at the moment. I've got nothing set up. So I think we'll probably do some noise readings and uh, stuff like that another time. Oops. Let's just go for 12.3 and see what we get. Okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's not bad, is it? Not bad at all. Don't suppose there's anything memorised, is there? Oh, yes, there is actually. So, so logic level three point. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't stay there. Okay, so. Three point two. Oops, now you've got to press it, press it again. Yeah. Press it, press it again. Bit of an odd way of uh, doing things. Just move that meter out of the way. Over volts protection, over current protection. 16 volts, it'd be a shame, it's a shame really that it doesn't select. If you press it once, you want 16 volts, but you've got to press it again. And it actually goes out, you would like it lit surely to know which one you're on. So, 22.4, what if I hold it? Nope, 22.4, that'll be fine. Mm. 28.8. But it will go, press it twice, mm. and M6, 32 volts. Yeah, I don't know whether I like that, the way that works uh, particularly. I'd, uh, I wouldn't mind pressing it twice, but then if it lit up, it's obviously got that functionality that it can light. Well, why not leave it lit so you know which one you're on? There's no indication here of uh, a memory position. Actually, output in anything? No, so it doesn't output anything until you uh, press the sort of soft standby, and that is then green, and that will fire up 32.01. So, pretty good. Um, so, look, it's going to do the job uh, for me. I very, very rarely need any sort of bench power supply. I don't mind that display at all, it's probably flickering in the camera, uh, but it's definitely not flickering for me. It's got a sort of old school uh, look uh, where it's made up of little segments, so that's quite, uh, quite interesting. Quite a good fan, I can certainly feel the flow blowing through the uh, case. comes on in standby. A nice feature I suppose because you don't have to keep turning it on and off here although it's hardly a big step to press the big button instead of the uh, the little one. If 
he suddenly wanted to use it from being off. I think we'll have to have a look at the five pages. Um, yeah, it's very slow to tick down the rotary encoder, but at least you can be very precise, I suppose. Yes, interesting. So I think that will definitely do the job. We have some soft silicon sort of feet. Fans now running. Seems to switch off when the voltage drops. I don't know if you can hear, but the fan is slowing down with every change of voltage. It stops and starts. Yeah, slows right the way down. And till it's off. kicks on. Six volts. Ooh, little kick. There we go. <laughs> Ten volts. Seems uh, that it stays on at the lower voltages but won't start up at the lower voltages. You've got to get up to about 10. So, yeah, okay, I'm pretty pleased with that. That is certainly going to do the uh, job for me. Um, so, yeah, Rockseed DC power supply, the RS305P. Pay £59 currently. I think there is a £10 voucher. So it's £65.97 uh, with less uh, 10% and uh, still in stock. And I think we'll be giving that a five star rating. Certainly seems accurate. And uh, we'll do some more checks uh, as time permits.